A special thanks to Lauer, Averscope, Blazer, Schneider Kreuzner, and Saray for supplying adapters for us to test in this video. Today, we are going to be comparing anamorphic adapters against each other to see the difference in their overall look, sharpness, chromatic aberration, lens breathing, focal length coverage, and flaring. We did try the SLR Magic 133X Anamorphot, but we found the results too unappealing and unusable. This was clearly really designed for smaller sensor cameras. We did try to get Moment involved as well, but Moment is having production demand issues. Anyway, we are going to be using the Schneider ISCO spherical lens set as the taking lenses for all of the adapters to try and keep a consistent look. These lenses are rebranded and differently coded versions of the dual lens cine lens set, so they weren't designed specifically for the Schneider adapter. So we think it's fair to use them for all. For this comparison, we aren't going to give any direct reviews of each adapter, but instead we are going to give you a brief description of each and leave judgment up to you. If you would like to jump straight to the comparison, go to this timecode. The first adapter is the Averscope 1.5X Amber Edition. FYI, they also have it in blue. We have the version 5, which is the version we recommend. This adapter comes with a rail attachment and a support foot, which you basically will need to use as there is no button alignment feature. It has a 52mm rear thread and 82mm front. Next, we have the Blazer Nero 1.5X adapter, which is the newest, smallest, and lightest adapter in this comparison. We have the blue version, but they have an amber edition on the way. The front extends as you focus, so rail-mounted map boxes just wouldn't work. The rear thread is 52mm and the front is 62mm. They also sell an optional step-down ring kit for you to use with larger lenses, with front threads up to 77mm in size. Next, we have the new Lauer 1.33X Adapter Amber Edition. I believe they will also have a neutral and a blue version. This adapter was specifically designed with their Nanomorph 1.5X lenses in mind, turning them into 2X stretch anamorphic lenses. But like all other adapters, it can be used with other lenses. This has a button alignment feature and a 77mm rear thread and an 86mm front. And it also comes with step-down rings. Next, we have the Schneider Kreuzner 1.5X Iscoscope Adapter. There is no rail mount, but this adapter has a support hole so you can attach your own rail support. It has a 72mm rear thread and a 95mm front thread. The front does rotate as you focus, so clamp-on Mac boxes are a no-go. Next, we have the Saray 1.25X Adapter. It was designed to work with their 1.6 anamorphic satin and Venus lenses, making them into 2X stretch lenses. It has an 82mm rear thread and a 95mm front thread. It also includes a few step-up rings for smaller lenses. There is no rail support, but once screwed onto the lens, there is a button for easy alignment. And lastly, we have the Great Joy 1.35X adapter. This adapter has no support options built in, but you can loosen the secondary thread ring once screwed into your lens and align the adapter and then retighten. The rear thread by default is 67mm, but you can also swap it out for 72, 77 or 82mm as optional accessories. And the front thread is 82mm. Also, Doolens made a support foot for it, which I'd recommend to make your life a little easier. A couple of things that are important to keep in mind before we jump into the comparison. Firstly, although smaller lenses generally work better, rear thread size doesn't matter as much as you might think. These adapters generally don't work on ultra-wide angle lenses anyways. And generally on medium to longer lenses, the actual surface area of the front of your lens the sensor is using is very minimal. For example, here is the Great Joy 1.35X adapter on the Zhongyi 50mm full frame cine lens. And to my surprise, this combo actually works. You just need a way of mounting the adapter in front of the lens and blocking out any light between the adapter and the lens. For best results, you want to get the adapter as close to the front lens element as possible, and it's also good to know that most adapters are optimized to get the sharpest results at around 50mm on full frame, and get softer at tighter angles and vignette at wider ones. It is also important to remember that although all of these adapters work on full frame, some are recommended for Super 35 as their main use case. And secondly, all of these adapters have different amounts of stretch, so they will have more or less anamorphic type character to their look than each other. So I don't think it's fair to say that one is better than the other due to this. It's all just subjective preference. I need to add that Blazer sent us their adapter after we had already filmed our tests with the others, so some of the footage was done on different days. We tried our best to keep the framing consistent. And with all that said, let's jump into the comparison.
I hope you have enjoyed this comparison. Before we finish, I want to stress the importance of choosing the right taking lenses. These adapters exaggerate the character the lenses already have. So for best results, try using taking lenses that already have a lot of character to start off with. The iron glass set is popular for this and my personal favorite are the Meyer Optic Bolitar lenses. With that said, thanks to all the brands involved. I'll leave a link for where you can buy all the adapters in the description. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, you can follow us via the links below. And we'll see you next time.